Hello everybody, this is Ms. Smith, and today we're going to do systems of linear equations. There's point-slope form, which we could actually call a point-slope formula, because this is kind of where we begin when we're asked to find an equation. You're given two points, or a slope and a point. So what we need for this one, actually, we can use it as the formula if we're given the slope right and a point and a coordinate for X and a coordinate for Y okay so um kind of keep that in mind alrighty and we'll kind of look at an example of that after a bit in a bit so the other two things though we have general form which we didn't really use that much of it a lot of problems began with this general form <clears throat> this is where a B a X plus B Y is equal to C the big thing here is a, b, and c are integers. And for this one, it's easy to find the intercept. It's very simple to find x and y intercept. If you let y equal to 0, what you can do here is kind of, watch, I'll show you. You can let, let's say we'll find the y intercept. If you want to find y intercept, if you let x equal 0, that term blacks out and right there if you have the by equal to c you can see that it's very simple to solve for y or if you let y equal zero to find the x intercept right you black out that term and you can see that you only have x ax equal to c you can solve for that simply solve for x so for that one it's very simple to find your x and y intercepts okay Alrighty, now for slope-intercept form, you guys ought to be familiar with that one. A lot of your problems end up in this form, especially if you're going to graph them. You can either use this to start, if you're given a slope and a y-intercept, then you can just plug them in to find the equation. Or, if you want to graph just using a point in the slope, this is the way to go, because you have your slope right there on the front of, y, of x, and then b core this b term at the end the constant term shows us where the line intersects the y intercept okay so that would be what zero whatever b is for the y coordinate okay so there are three major forms of our linear equations remember they're called linear equations why because they are equations of what lines correct so notice the word line is in linear it's like a line or okay so FYI okay so um let's go on so okay next thing to kind of recall is the idea of a slope okay remember that we use an M generally you're going to use the letter M for the variable of slope okay so when you see M you know that's you could pretty much bet that slope that we're talking about here okay so uh, here's that formula remember we have the difference of the y's the y coordinates right of course you're given two points right and we divide that by the difference of my x coordinates what it is is the the uh, let's see the, the vertical movement the up and down movement divided by the horizontal movement Another way to think of slope would be rise over run. Okay, rise over run meaning if we have this. So here's an example, part one. Graph the line that passes through two negative four and has a slope of negative four. So right away, let's take a look at the slope. And I'm talking about rise over run. Okay, and so rise meaning the movement up and down, right? Movement up and down, the change in your y's over the change in your horizontal movement. That would be run side to side, left to right movement. So rise over run. Okay, I want to show you one thing quickly so we can have negative 4, and we have to make it look like a fraction to have the rise over the run. So rising negative 4 will not mean going up. It means actually going down. Okay, so fall negative 4. 
and so over positive one meaning going to the right one and we'll do that in a minute but I want to show you an equivalent form of this slope if I take the negative off the 4 and put it in to the denominator with the 1 not simplified but I can use this equivalent form in version rise over run for that so so kind of keep that in mind okay, it's a little trick if you're running out of graphing space it's a great trick at any rate we can begin with our point to negative 4 so let's plot that point okay so let's plot 2 negative 4 remember we always begin with the origin so 2 is positive and that's our x movement right that's our x coordinate by the way let's label our axes so 2 to the right will be what right there 2 to the right 1 2 right here okay and then oh excuse me I don't want to plot my point yet 2 to the right put your put your pin there and then go down for 1 2 3 4 boom there's my point so here is the point 2 negative 4 okay all right right there okay so from that point I can use rise over run to get to the next a, another point on the line it's not necessarily the very next point right we don't know that's infinitely many points on this line so but the next point that would have a good cross section a whole number so let's start with the first version of the slope the rise over run that's negative 4 over 1 so let's rise negative 4 which is really fall so we'll go down 4 let me make a little arrow let me get my pen set for that <clears throat> and I'll do like a little light green arrow for my steps okay so from this point okay let's see hold on a second all right okay hold on a second from this point we go down four fall four one two three four and from here we'll run one and here is where we end up this would be another point on that line okay so this is where you want to fill in a point okay so what we're gonna do now though is we're gonna label this point okay <clears throat> so to label the point you don't use slope we're gonna start from the origin and count okay kind of work your way back up as though you're plotting it so look we have one two three right so our x coordinate is three and how many units down does it go so it's gonna be a negative y so it's gonna go one two three four five six seven eight so the point we ended up at is three negative eight and what you'll notice is that remember the slope is a difference in y's difference in x's the difference of these two y's should be what four units right so yeah it's four units away and the difference in the x's should be one okay okay and the direction is what the sign gives you okay so let's kind of go to the next one and you can see that it's shaping up to be a negative slope it's going downhill from left to right okay let's use the other one let's use the four over negative one okay so we'll go from the first point we were starting at start from the original point to negative four and we're going to go rise four one two three four and then run left because we're using the one has the negative sign on it so we end up here right on the axis so let's go ahead and fill in that point okay so here it is here's my three points let me go ahead and label that one that would be the point one zero okay so now I have plotted three points again we want to write the equation of the line here's a part two that passes through two negative four and has slope of what negative four okay so where do we begin with this so we have to look at what we're given versus what formula we need so before I write my given let's go back and look at one of the formulas that we really needed we were looking at 
the point slope form EULA earlier. Remember that? And what does that look like? Okay, that looks like this. Let's write it down. This is the point slope form. This is where we begin. Anytime you're going to be asked to find the equation of a line, you want to begin with this form. Okay, and then from here, you can go into any of the other forms that, that you're, whatever you're asked for. Okay, and so it looks like this. Y minus Y1 equal to slope M, right? Parentheses X minus X1. Now look, I'm going to put a little arrow underneath each item that is going to be replaced with a number. The Y1, M, and X1. So what do we need for this? We need a point, x1, y1, and the slope. And it just so happens that's exactly what we have here. We have a point. And we have a slope. Okay, so let's see. We are given m, right? That's negative 4. And we're given x1, y1. Watch. We're going to label it like this just to keep it simple. x1 and y1. Okay. So let's go for it. Let's find the equation of this line. And keep it simple, folks. I mean, really, just it is what it is. Don't read more into it than it needs to be. A lot of people make that mistake, and that's not what I want you to do. I want you guys to just take it at face value, plug the values in, and get the equation. So anything without a subscript will remain an, a variable. So this first y begins, it stays what it is, stays as y. So y minus a negative 4, right? Minus negative 4. Be careful with your signs. Okay, and then m is a negative 4. So put that there. Open parentheses. This x has no subscript, so it is going to remain x. Minus, what? A 2. Okay, so first things first, let's get rid of all those parentheses, right? You always want to simplify before you start trying to move stuff around as much as you can. So let's have y. This will become plus 4. Leave that there. And we're going to now distribute negative 4 into the x minus 2. So negative 4 gets multiplied by x, and negative 4 gets multiplied by negative 2. Negative 4, negative 2, that's going to become a positive 8. Okay, now what we had here, the beginning here, this would be if you wanted point slope formula as a form point slope form, this is where you're at right here. Point slope form of this equation. And let's say I want to put it in, in slope intercept form. Okay, let's go for that. So we'll really what you're doing to get slope intercept form out out of this would be solve for y and get y by itself, right? So let's subtract 4 from both sides. That's simple. So we'll have what? y is equal to negative 4x plus 4. So what we have here is slope intercept form. Okay? This is a good checkpoint because you're given the slope, right? <clears throat> Okay, and so you should have a negative 4 in front of the x, right? Let's remember that what we have here was slope-intercept. You're given the slope, and you can easily see this y-intercept. So in other words, this line should cross the y-axis. It should intercept the y-axis at the point, what, 0, 4. And let's take a look at what we got there. So 0 left to right, 1, 2, 3, 4. And yeah, it looks like we're about doing that, right? So, um, of course, my line is not perfect, but you get the point. And so we're doing pretty good here, okay? Oh, let's see. Okay. Okay. So now that we have the, the equation, y is equal to negative 4x plus 4, we can label our line. Generally, you want to label things in your uh, graph when you graph a line because not everybody is Picasso not everybody is going to do things perfectly when they're freehanding some graph uh, action there so what we'll do is we'll label right at one of the arrows on the graph we'll put y is equal to negative 4x plus 4 okay and you can label your y intercept as well okay alright so 
anyway, that is just a kind of little short review of a few little things that's good to remember from the uh, beginning of our lessons with linear equations. Okay? Okay, so now we're going to look at systems of linear equations. So far, when we looked at linear equations, we, we've been dealing with a single equation on the graphing area. Okay? So now what we're going to do is we're going to take into account a grouping of linear equations for whatever reason. And you'll get into the why would they do this when you get into your word problems. But right now I just kind of want to look at the basic, app, the basic um, I guess, the logic behind it. We'll get into the application in a minute, you know, and afterwards. Systems of equations basically would be just groupings of equations. So right there, I mean, you can define it just like that, okay? So we call systems of linear equations two or more equations that are true at the same time. Many times you'll hear them called simultaneous equations. So um, if you are Googling for examples and you see the, if you enter linear equations or systems of linear equations and you see the word simultaneous in front of equations, 
that would be the, the right thing. You can check those out too. So simultaneous equations. What happens is there are a few different outcomes that could come of you trying to solve these. And so let's kind of just look at what we can expect as far as once we learn more about the process of solving a system of equations, what could happen. Okay, so it's good to kind of know beforehand what uh, we're looking at finding. Okay, let's take a look. Okay, so here are some possible outcomes when we're solving our systems of linear equations. So here's what could possibly happen, okay? Let's kind of zoom in a little bit on this. So um, first off, we can have your typical solution. Let me put this in the right spot there, okay? The typical solution is when we have two lines that actually intersect at one point. This point of intersection, okay, the point of intersection is actually going to be the solution to the system. So that's kind of the numbers you would come up with when you're solving for x and y. So the point of intersection is a few things. First off, we can say that the point of intersection is actually a point that is shared by both lines and you can see that it's located on both of the lines okay so it's shared by both lines it also the point of intersection it contains the x and y coordinates or values that would make both equations true in other words once you solve for x and y and you check it what happens when we go to check any equation? We plug the value we find in to see if we have a true statement, right? So the x and y co coordinates of the point of intersection will make both of the equations or all of the equations in a system true, all of them. That's how you check it. So you know you got the right answer, okay, to be frank about it. And then lastly, most importantly, the point of intersection of all the the uh, graphs of the lines. This intersection point is actually the solution for our system. Okay, so intersecting lines, that's possible. Okay, so you can see that obviously you can solve these by graphing too. And you can see what kind of solution you'll have. This means that we'll have only one solution to these types. Okay, and this is your typical situation. Make note of that too, okay? So having a consistent and independent system of equations this is your most typical okay so remember that okay then next let's look at what's called a consistent and dependent so consistent obviously consistent means there are solutions okay has solutions okay so kind of just put a note for that so the consistent basically means there are solutions. Solutions exist. So you can put that. There are going to be solutions. Okay, so um, dependent, however, let's take a look at that. One way to kind of suss out dependent or independent would be this. Imagine that at our point of intersection in the first uh, the first picture we have there where we have the single point here the consistent and independent one the most typical imagine that's a hinge those two pop lines could swivel right on that one hinge that would be independent okay and so if you look at the second two notice that in the second one the one in the middle here consistent and dependent we can't swivel, the, the lines don't have that quote-unquote hinge look to them, right? Actually, we call these collinear. Every point on, this, on these lines are shared, okay? So let's make that note, all points are shared, okay? All the points on each line are shared, okay? So, I mean, that's how many solutions are there? Infinitely many solutions. Okay, 
One more thing to note about that, the previous, the one in the middle there, the consistent and dependent uh, linear system um, is this, that these are actually the graph of the same line, but when the equations are presented to you, they're equivalent equations. And uh, we'll have an example of what will happen in the algebra in a bit. Okay, lastly, we'll have this inconsistent system. And of course, it's independent. These lines are independent of one another. They don't touch, right? There's nothing common to both. Most important thing to realize is that what is the deal? These two lines never touch. Well, look, what type of line is that? That's parallel. Parallel lines never touch. And you can't say that, oh, look, if we find they have the same slope, then they're going to be inconsistent. That's not true because look in the, the second example there, the consistent independent example in the middle, those have the same slope, but they share the same, you know, they share all the same points. But the last one though, if they have different y-intercepts, if you put them into slope-intercept form, the y-intercept will be different but the slope will actually be the same. So parallel lines meaning we'll have zero solutions, no intersection point and definitely no points shared. They never touch. So these are your possible outcomes for when, you, when you're going to solve systems of linear equations. The best way for you to learn about it is to check it, take a look at some examples, I think. And try to follow along, try to write these down, okay? What I'm going to do is just kind of exhibit a couple of ways of solving these with our algebra, okay?
So now we're going to take a look at one of the methods of solving systems of linear equations. The first thing we're going to look at is called the substitution method. And the substitution method is doing exactly what it says, substituting one thing in for another. Just like when you substitute a value, a numerical value in for x, you've done that before, we're going to start substituting different expressions in for x's and y's. So here's how it goes. So what we're going to do first is we're going to begin by just kind of setting it up so that we can keep order. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to label one of my e equations with a little one with a circle around it like this, x plus 3y equal to 6 and then the second one listed, I'm going to label that with a little 2. And so now I can kind of keep track of which equation is where. Because once you start substituting in and, and manipulating them with your algebra, you know, it can get a little confusing. So this will eliminate 99% of that confusion. So if you're a little uh, apprehensive about the skill, then you definitely want to do this. Okay, so the first thing you want to do if you look it down there in the little list, take one of these equations and solve it for either x or y, whichever is easier. Now if you take a look at equation number one, see that x is already by itself, in a way, it doesn't have a coefficient other than one, so we won't have to do much dividing off. So what I'm going to do is take equation one and I'm going to solve it for x. So let's kind of do that. We're going to kind of go over here to the right. It helps to draw little arrows too, to what step by step whatever you're doing on your paper too. So I'm going to come over here to the right and I will rewrite equation 1 with x by itself on one side of the equal sign. So x is equal. So what we do is we're going to subtract 3y from both sides of this equation. Okay? So you can kind of um, imagine. Let's see. Let me put it this way, okay, so minus 3y and minus 3y, okay, so there you have it, so x is equal to what, and you can write it as 6 minus 3y, or you can write negative 3y plus 6, it's up to you, okay, so what I want to do next is I want to take this phrase that just appeared, and watch, let me kind of make it a brighter <clears throat> blue here for you. We're going to take this 6 minus 3y. Okay, and we're going to take that into the other equation, equation 2, wherever I see x. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put that in here for x. Okay? So let's go on down to that step. Okay? Okay, so here I go. I'm going to come over with equation 2, keep track of it, okay, and I'm going to rewrite it, negative 3 minus 3y is equal to 4, instead of an x, I'm going to open a set of parentheses big enough to fit a binomial, which would be 6 minus 3y in place of x. Now that I've done this substitution, I've substituted this phrase in for x, Okay, you'll notice that I only have y's in my equation. Now I can solve this for y. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, we're gonna subs we're gonna go ahead and distribute the four. Right, we'll begin by four times six, four times negative three y. Okay, so let's go down the line and solve for y, step by step.
So now we have y is equal to 3. Oops. So now we have y is equal to 3 here. And what we can do is we can take this and resubstitute the y value that we just got in for the y value up top in one of the original equations. Okay, so when we do that, the beautiful thing is we'll only have x left and we'll be able to solve for that. So what we're going to do, let's go ahead and take the original version of equation 1. Okay, so I'm going to put that, I'm going to take this right up here in this little pocket. I can draw a little line here. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to take equation 1, okay, which is what? x plus 3y equal to 6, and I'm going to substitute y is equal to 3. Okay, and so let's go for it. So I'll put a 3 in for my y. So x plus 9 is equal to 6. Subtract your 9. Okay. And what is it now? We should have what? Negative 3. So are we done? Not really. We are done, but then we're not. You do have your solution for x and for y, which is great. But what you need to point out when you're answering these is that it's not just simple simply, I guess it is simple, but it's not just an x core, x and a y, it's coordinates for a point. So the point, or the, we would say the solution point, you can just say this solution point. Okay, point, or you can even say the point of intersection where these two lines intersect, intersect would be negative three, three. Remember that this is your x, y. Always your coordinates are in that order of x and y. So please don't forget that. Don't get that mixed up and don't just solve for one. You gotta solve for both. Go that extra step and resubstitute in that value, okay? Okay, let's try something else. By the way, we say that this example, since it has a single solution point, remember we talked about the hinge? It's consistent and independent. Okay, so what we're going to do next is we're going to take this problem that we just did and we're going to verify the solution graphically and algebraically. And so you may, you may come into some homework problems that ask you to verify that a point is a solution to the system of equations or it might ask you to look at a graph and maybe verify or, or point out what would be the point of intersection or the solution point. So this one, this right here, will help you with that, I am hoping. So um, let me get this out of the way and then we'll look at that. Okay, so let's look at each one. What I want you guys to do when you run into these problems is you would like, you will need to take each one of the equations and graph it kind of separate them in your mind, I guess, kind of to uh, make sure you're graphing them correctly. So take them one at a time. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to kind of take them one color at a time for you guys for this example. So I'm going to let one be green and I'll let one be blue or something like that. Okay. So I'll let the first one be the green. I'll label it with a one. Okay. All right, so let's take a look at that. We're going to do x plus 3y is equal to 6. And actually, graphing this one would be quite simple. Um, it is in standard form or general form. So finding the x and y intercepts would be quite easy. So let's go ahead and find the x intercept for this one first. Okay, to do that, we let y equal 0. Now, when we let y equal 0, what happens here, okay? We're going to, let me put a little parenthesis here. Let y equal 0, okay? Dot, 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 meaning solve for x. x plus 3 times 0 is equal to 6. What happens here, then? This zeroes out, right? This whole term zeroes out. 
Oh, wait, I didn't mean to go that far with that. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Here we go. Zero. Okay, so what happens is we have x is equal to 6. Okay, so that's one of our points, and that would be, and you can go ahead and make the xy chart too, by the way. Okay, let's see, we'll have x, y, we only need two, maybe, I would go with three points though, guys, just because you want to have some verification on the direction of your line, in case uh, simple mistakes are made, you just never know. So y intercept means let x equal zero, okay? So we're gonna in parentheses here, let x equal zero. In other words, solve for y. Okay, so then x will be zero plus three y equal to six. So what happens here? This goes away and we have the three y equal to six. So we're gonna divide by three. Kind of put that a little close there. Okay, so what happens here is we have y equal to 2. So, okay, so we let x equal 0 and y ended up being 2. So here are two points, and let's get one more for good measure. Okay, <clears throat> a good thing here to do, since we know we're going to wind up dividing by a 3 in the end, would be to use a multiple of 3. Okay, we want to make sure we have a multiple of 3 on that right side. So for x, let's choose, let's choose um, a, a three. Let's go ahead and do that. So we'll choose three. Since it's already a multiple of three on the other side, another multiple of three will help. So we'll put a three here. So now let's let x equal three. All right, so what I've done is I've plugged, instead of x, I've plugged in a three for x, okay? So I'm gonna solve for y. Okay, so subtract 3 from both sides, cancels here, and then y is actually going to be 1. Let's see what happens now. Let's plot some points. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 to the right, 0 up and down, so that will be our x-intercept. Okay, so um, now let's look at 0, 2. I have to make this a little bit bigger, not that big. <clears throat> yeah, that'll do. Okay, so 0 left to right, up 2. That's there. And 3, 1. 1, 2, 3, positive 3 to the right, and up 1 is here. So we're doing pretty good here, okay? So, um... Let's go ahead and fill in the line, okay? So here we are. Let's do that. Let's see if I can get my pen to behave. Great. <laughs> of course, I want it to be thinner than that. Let's see. Okay. So let's see how to do this. Okay, so here's our line. Okay, this is equation number one. And you can see that it has a negative slope, okay? Let's see, okay. So this is kind of acting funny. Okay. All right, so here's the equation of our line one, okay, the very first one. So I guess the next equation, I'm going to let that one be, um, let me scroll up a little bit. We'll let this next one have like a bright blue color Okay, so the next equation is this. Let's rewrite that one. So now we're going to kind of do a similar thing, and um, very similar, actually. If you want to put it into general form, you can. That's fine. It's, it all works out as long as you your algebra is correct. It's all good. So look, it's, we could do that if you guys would like to see that be... To, that done, that's fine. So, okay. Doing that, we can go ahead and actually add three lines on the sides. Okay, so we'll start over here on the right with the 4x. Okay, so here's where you and I'll have negative 3 is equal to 4x plus 3y. <laughs> okay, and if you'd like to see it um, in the actual form, oh, excuse me, not 3x. Okay, it'd be what? 4x plus 3y equals 0. Okay, so here's where you can do the intercept. You can do the intercept, one of the intercepts will not be so pleasant to graph, so we may have to do 
you shoot other point kicking and get crafty with that. So let's check it out. Uh, here, if we go ahead and write x equals zero, let's have our x last Okay, let's go ahead and get started with that. Here, let's let x equal zero first. Okay, and remember that's going to be our y intercept. So that'll zero out this first term. Okay, and so okay, x equals zero will end up being yes, three y. You put a negative three, right? Because the x term cancels out, and y ends up being what? Negative one. Good job. So we have negative one here. Now to do the other intercept, right? The x intercept, we have to let y equal zero. And we can go ahead and find it too. We may not graph it, but we'll find it. Good practice. So what do we do? We're going to let x equal, we'll let y equal zero to find the x-intercept. Okay, so when we do that, here's what happens. Let's go ahead and plug it in under the reason that we laid it down to basically. Okay, this is what we're looking at. Okay, and so we're going to have that, and we're going to have that equal zero. Okay, so that whole y term will cancel out. We have 4x is equal to negative 3, divided by 4. Both sides, and then we have negative 3 fourths, right? Or you can put a negative 0.75 if you'd like. We'll go ahead and put negative three-fourths for now, okay? All right, so not pretty to, to graph. You can do it, it'll work, but, you know, we'd like to see some whole steps, okay? There are a couple other things we can do. One thing in this case, see, if, if, the more I think about it, the, even if I put this into slope-intercept form, I am going to not have an easy time with it, okay? Because there's a lot of fraction work to be done. What I'm going to do for you guys is show you a secret trick, okay? When you have general form, okay, your general form or standard form, this is something neat. And uh, probably only my students ever get to know this one. Okay, remember it's integers. A, B, and C have to be integers for this to work out. AX plus BY is equal to C. To find the slope without changing it or finding or doing any plug-in to formulas, if you have this form, your slope can be found by doing this. Take the opposite of a, or just take these coefficients, a over b. Simple as that. Now, what do we have here? For We have our standard form. So a over b would be 4 thirds, right? So negative 4 thirds. So in this case, okay, so let's kind of get a little bright color going here. So in this case, okay, come back. Okay, this guy, our slope would actually be what? Negative 4 thirds. So let's go on back. We have at least one point that's pretty to graph, right? Let's go back to our blue color and go back to the graph, okay? All right, now let's get my thick um, marker ready, and we're going to go ahead and plot 0, negative 1, okay? Let me go ahead and make this a little smaller so we don't have to keep rolling over there like that. Okay, so let's do 0, negative 1. Okay. Okay, I'll get that over a little bitty bit. There we go. So zero left to right, down one. All right, there we go. Here's our point. And from there, we can rise over run. Remember that? So we're going to have negative, what, four thirds. Okay, so we can keep the negative with the four, or we can have four over negative three. So you can put the negative on top or the bottom as long as you have one negative, okay? So let's try this out. Okay, so rise over run. So let's go with the four first and let's look at it as negative four, negative four over three, okay? So instead of rising, I'm actually gonna fall four. So we have one, two, three, four, Four, right, and then positive three because the negative's up top. One, two, three, right? So this is where that point is. Okay, and so what point is that? We need to fill in our xy chart. Remember, we already have zero, negative one, right? So this one is what? One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, three, five. So three, five is another point, okay? 
And remember that we can go in the other direction by putting the negative, the slope, the negative on that denominator if we need to. Might as well just to practice. Now rise over run. Let's start from that original point. Rise four, one, two, three, four, one, two, run three negative, right? Okay, and here we are. Right there. Okay. So now what is this point? I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, so negative 3, and then from there we go 1, 2, positive 3, right? All right, negative 3, positive 3. So now we have plenty points. Let me go ahead and erase that little alternate slope, and I'm going to go ahead and fill in the correct point for that. Okay, fix that too. Okay, so this guy and then I'm gonna have what negative three three so now we got this going on now okay and actually we have the the solution point as one of our points as well so that's kind of convenient let's go ahead and get this going here and almost done you guys been great let's extend this out a little bit Let's see if I can do it, if my computer will let me. Ah, oops. There we go. Now, okay. So, what do we have here, okay? <clears throat> Let's take a look. Let me make my little arrows. Now, this is equation two. So, I still want to label my equations that I've graphed, but since I have them written right above with with these one and two labels i'm going to go ahead and label them in that manner now look at here here's the point where they cross okay and so that's here in red there so this is the point one two three negative three right positive three for the y so that's the solution, and look, that is what we got for our solution earlier. Yep. And so that is a graphical ver verification, okay? And algebraically, what you can do is plug in x equal to negative 3 and then y is equal to 3 into your original equations. So we can do a check or a verification similarly. All right, and so I'll go ahead and hurry up and do this. I'm going to go to equation one, and I'm going to plug in. Remember that we want to let x equal to negative three, and we want y to be three. Make sure we get true statements, right? So equation one. Okay, we're going to have negative three plus three. Instead of y, I'm going to plug in a three equal to 6. So we want to verify that one, make sure it's true. You can't just do it for 1 though. You got to, and after we do this, we have to go to the other equation. 9 minus 3, so sure enough, it does check out, okay? So that's good for the first equation. It's very possible to have the solution for 1 and then the next one be false. If that happens, it means you you got the wrong answer. So this check has to be okay for both, because it has to be a point on both of those lines, okay? So let's hurry up and get this one going, and we'll be on our way. So negative 3 minus 3, y is 3, okay? It's equal to 4, and then negative 3 here. So negative 3 minus 9 is equal to negative 12, which is true. Negative 12 is equal to negative 12. They both check out, and so we're happy. Okay, we got the right answer. And so hopefully plenty of right answers are coming up for you very soon. And um, if you're struggling with anything, just give me, a give me a ring, give me a text, give me an email, be in touch, and come get some help from your teacher. I'm here for you. Y'all have a great day.